Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to NJPW Poodle Wrestling Review here on Andre Melbo Wrestling Talk and now in audio form on A Plus Productions. Hello, I am your co host, Andre C. Right over here. It's the wonderful effervescent Princess Melball. How you doing? I am doing great, Andre. I had a pretty good leg day today. There's been some hilarity that I've gotten to pretty much eat some popcorn and watch happening outside in the neighborhood. That is always just fun and dandy to laugh at. <laughs> it's been a fun week. We just did an interview for A Plus Productions with the amazing Boris Boris. Boris Roberto Aguilar. Ah. We had a great time today. It's a fun day. It's nice out. It's a good day today. Andre, how are you doing? I'm good. I got some yard work done today. Uh, did some stuff around the house. Got some bank. Went up. Got some banking I need to get done. Done. So split some split some money into different accounts so that I have access to a bit of money if I need it. But then I have the rest still earning me a good chunk, good, earning me a decent percentage. You know, all that fun hey. stuff. Love it. Love it. Get your money. Love it. Love it. But we're not here to talk about meet my money or Melville's working out. We're here to talk about professional wrestling. And we're here to talk about day seven number 17 and 18, which are the A block semifinals and the A and or the A and B block semifinals and the A and B block finals matches. And then we will be back tomorrow because this show will come out on Tuesday. We will Wednesday. We will have our G1 finals review. We'll talk about the entire show, all the undercard, the stuff that it's leading to. And we'll talk the big fin- G1 finals match. Uh, we'll talk what's coming out, what's all the matches that have been announced for the road to destruction, for destruction in Kobe, for King of Pro Wrestling. So much coming in the next couple of days. So we're going to talk about this here and we'll come back tomorrow. And we're going to, we're loving it. G1, the G1 is over. I'm very okay with that. Now I'm starting to watch some stardom, but I'm just kind of picking and choosing matches that I randomly want to watch on each day is what I'm kind of doing right now. <laughs> That's fair. That is very fair. Same. There's, I'm trying to There's watch aim. at least one match from each day just to get something. So I have something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. I've been watching so much wrestling all over the place, man. I've even like, I had to take a break from like serious wrestling mm. to to watch some some yano wrestling yesterday in ddt um and i got i got what i paid for on that one i got some amusement it was there you go <laughs> you got what i There's paid nothing... for. yeah yeah i mean yes yeah exactly yeah you pay for the wrestling universe one um <laughs> yeah i got to see maki ito and Chris Brooks and oh, please say his name right, Masato. The guy who there's a guy there who looks like a very young version of Takeshka. I believe mm. his name is Masato. And a teamed up with Chris Brooks, a referee, and another guy. I can't remember the GCW guy's name. I'm sorry, sir. Um, he's good. He was good, but I got to see them all sit down and cry have a collective cry together uh, because sometimes you need um, that you know when when boys are mean to you that's what you gotta do you just gotta sit down and cry about it a little bit <laughs> oh we're in here to cry we're gonna talk some wrestling before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, whether you're, If you're listening on A Plus Productions in our new audio home, thank you so much. Like the channel. Uh, like the Facebook page. We really appreciate it. We have the wrestling feed. We're going to have the entertainment feed. We're going to have a just a pure sports feed. We're going to have like baseball and hockey and football and whatever they, we, want, we want to talk about over there. So uh, check out the feed. Subscribe to them. We would really appreciate it. Check out the Facebook page. Join us over there. We would really appreciate it. And if you are watching us on the YouTube, thank you so very much. Whether it's Andre Melville Wrestling Talk, whether it's Backbreaker Video, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, goal, uh, field goal. Field goal is good. The kick is good. Um, thank you so much. Uh, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Comment down below. Don't forget to share us out. Tell your friends, family, and just awesome 
awesome people that you know in this world. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. <laughs> I love how you played that, too. I even play strum the air guitar, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's get into it. We're gonna talk yes. some G one A block semifinals to start, or A and B block semifinals to start. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to po- talk about uh, a match that was on the undercard quickly. It was mm-hmm. the War Dogs, David Finley and Gato taking on TMDK Zach Saber Jr. and new member. Hartley Jackson. I quite like this Hartley Jackson guy. Uh, he's bigger dude. Got some power behind him. Just throw it, throwing his weight around. Just really good. I, I liked it. Uh, the end of it came. Gato's sitting on top of Hartley in like the camel clutch. But Hartley just stands up, carrying him on his back, and just drops back. Hits him with a senton. And then just hits him with a Death Valley driver to win it. So Hartley Jackson getting his first win. On his first night, or as far as I know, first night in in New Japan. So. Oh, yeah, a spindly, not well, a bindly, just a, but just a spindly. Just, just yeah, yeah, a spindly, spindly not, not a just a spindly, not, not a, a bindly. <laughs> All spindly, no bindly. Oh, but again, I I just I I was like, ooh, new name, and then. There's been announcements uh, that there's going to be a new member of Team uh, of uh, United Empire coming to to uh, Japan in September, which we will talk about on tomorrow's episode because that's all due to all, all the announcements for what's coming in the next little bit. So we'll talk about that mm-hmm. on tomorrow's episode. So like lots of new members joining factions here in Japan, and I'm liking it. Me too because we need it we need to to stack this tag division again and i would like to see new members come in work with their people you know show why they were chosen kind of to work with their people you know very similar to how they kind of did with callum callum kind of came in he got paired up with people like uh, varying people with united empire same with bolton teamed up with various members of hontai you know they it's a good introduction a slow mm. introduction before the big splash, if you will. Yeah, I agree. Or or working young lions, things like that. And like yeah, you know, getting yeah. to work with young lions and getting some wins there, uh, which he yeah, wasn't getting a lot yeah. in tag action and stuff. So yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. But hardly Unless getting a win in the first involved. tag. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If Gato's involved, he's getting pinned, most likely. Hundred percent. So we'll get into it. We're gonna talk about Yeah, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk about it. We're talking about A block semifinal. It is Shingo Takagi versus the Great Okan. Khan establishing the technical wrestling early on in this. Um, but Shingo trying to use the power to really kind of muscle Khan around and smack him around. But Khan really gets the technical wrestling going, working mm-hmm. working over the arm and then working over the legs throughout the match. So just just getting technical about it, really working the arm to try to take away that, that uh, pumping bomber. Of Shingo Takagi's mm-hmm. in this match. Um, mm-hmm. Again, just I thought really good uh, stuff here. Uh, uh, Shingo rocking that uh, sword hammer variant of his uh, that we like to call the the, yes. I guess the, the the sharpest sword hammer that we I've I've ever seen. That's for sure. I mean, we ha- especially going over what we've seen. Regrettably, what. What the originator of the sword hammer has kind of been doing, it's just, it, yeah. But then again, watch some of the stuff he did towards the end of his run in New Japan. <laughs> there was some bad there, too. Yeah, but like, you know what my theory is with that, though? He got sloppy. <laughs> He he's one of those people. Utama is one of those people who can in, work interchangeably. He can either have a really great singles run, or he can work well with a team or faction. We saw that with the Bullet Club and the longevity that he had within it. Tangaloa is not his brother's brother in that respect. He needs somebody else to to help him, and there. I mean, it's. Um, Maybe it's just we didn't notice that he was acting like this here, but I feel like he wasn't quite that slippy-slappy here as he was 
easy is there but you know yeah that could also just be me my wishful thinking and me not remembering a whole lot it's been a hot minute since we've seen him here it's definitely the second one <laughs> his end round was not good though but he we have to keep in mind that knee injury was a big big problem for him and maybe it still is maybe yeah. it's, a, it's a thing that's making him overthink everything now instead of just doing it don't think it do it just do it as uh, sure. Shia LaBeouf would yell, just do it, as he would yell. Uh, so Khan ends up uh, stopping a sliding bomber at one point into an arm triangle choke and just starts throwing Takagi around, gets those judo throws going, just flipping them everywhere, um, goes back to working on that arm, just cranking it with that Kimura, but uh, Shingo does get to the ropes. And really good back and forth here. Shingo getting some really good power. Uh, Khan going for the Mongolian chops, but then Shingo stops them and he starts hitting Mongolian chops of his own. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I, loved <laughs> I loved it. Um, Khan, uh, yeah, uh, Shingo coming in with lariat strikes. He's hurting his own arm as he does it because it's been just worked over the match. Khan catches a strike, gets a, pulls a Kimura, but Shingo does get a foot on the ropes. Uh, just the slip outs of uh, of of Shingo out of the sleeper out of the the suplex attempts were, were so good, uh, so smooth. Uh, Shingo blocks an eliminator, hits a beautiful pumping bomber into the cradle pen. You're like, oh my god, is he gonna win it? But no, no, he holds on. Um, Khan holds on to to stay alive. Uh, Shingo with the elbows to the neck. Uh, they're trading strikes. They're trading headbutts. And Khan hits a straight right. Uh, Khan uh, gets the arm again. Gets a straight arm bar. But Shingo fights out. Uh, Khan goes for the eliminator. But I get turned into a huge DDT. And then Shingo starts throwing shoulder blocks. Hits a German. Follows it up with a huge pumping bomber for two. Then he picks him up. Last of the dragon. And he gets the win. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I felt that the the end, like, kind of came a little suddenly. It wasn't like the the last of the dragon kind of popped out of nowhere, and and it was suddenly um, over. The the intensity though, and the energy in this match was so great, so high. Um, something I did want to touch on though. This has been a, such a strong tournament for Takaki. Um, coming through, there was, you know, defeating Naito night one. There was a couple of hiccups along the way. But he's had such a dominant and strong and impressive G1 this year. Um, something that I feel that we've noticed, though, that maybe he's starting to struggle with, or maybe that he's always struggled and maybe just not had to contend with too much is that technical kind of background. We do see him not in the same manner, but very similarly, I think, to, to how Hanako was before she started working a little bit more seriously um, with, I'm, I'm going to assume, Mina and Micah in defending against technicality. Um, and, and it almost kind of felt like it, this match was an uphill battle for him from start to finish just trying to to head off the power and just the the clear ring awareness and intelligence of the great Khan. it's just such a great match i was actually very surprised because the way this match was starting to go i was like they're gonna give it to Ocon. they're gonna give it to Ocon, and what an interesting end of the tournament that would be i was wrong yeah. and i'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> Because Khan would have won, he would it would have been a technical versus technical advantage against Zack Saber Jr. And that, let me wrong, that was incredible. In the, it was a great match in the tournament. But just to do it again mm -hmm. in an ABOC final would have been amazing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So we move on from this one to Kanosuke Takeshita versus Yota Suji. Holy moly. Holy shit. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. This was a beat the piss out of each other match. And just is it's it's both men are okay. very much about the hitting that flying strike, hitting that that 
as soon as you're going for that stomp out of nowhere, trying to catch you with that. Um, Takeshita really going with that power drive. It, it is a lot of his stuff is based around that power drive knee. Uh, but mm-hmm. Suji smart going attacking the knee early um, in this um, to really try to hobble sketcher because a lot of people have been targeting knees. He's got the tape on under his knee pad, so he's targeting the knee, really trying to. Uh, Look at him. He he got him in the he hits he gets that uh when he catch him for that second rope sent on, he got the knees up and then immediately drag and screwed him and started working that knee. Like mm-hmm. take take try to take that biggest weapon away is a, a smart idea. Mm-hmm. I have to agree. And and on top of that, you know, this is the second time that we've seen these two kind of meet throughout this tournament you know what did suji learn about takeshka through from the first time that he applied in this one and and vice versa with takeshka with suji um suji very much obviously paying attention to that knee issue i mean house of torture did a real number on it the match before mm-hmm. not very cool but as well yeah. as with that one continue yeah. And these two just the shots they were hitting to each other were mm-hmm. solid, solid striking. I, I loved it. Um Takeshita gets Suji up top, gets a superplex, and Suji rolls the floor. Uh Takeshita does, pulls out what he did to David Finley, covered him in chairs, and hits a sent on atomico over the top to Suji on the and onto the chairs or top of Suji on the floor. Looks so mm-hmm. good. It looks so good, man. Um mm-hmm. Back in the ring, Suji blocks a blue thunder, hits a tilt to world backbreaker, sending and Takesha rolls out, and Suji hits that beautiful tote face with his Sita, just a rocket. Ugh, so good. So smooth. He's clearly learning that from Bushi. Oh, yeah. Who better to learn that from? <laughs> from Bushi and probably from Teton, too. Uh, like when he was over there training with them, when he was in his Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. like just some crazy stuff. Um, just great, great spots here. Just the, the strike exchanges and everything. Uh, they're fighting each other for the suplex, and Suji muscles Takeshita up for that Falcon Arrow driver, which he uh, Walker did yell, uh, "Raging Fire," which is Takeshita's version of the Falcon Arrow driver. Is that is that uh, Raging Fire? So he yeah, did yeah. he did say Raging Fire for Suji. Um, he goes for the gene blaster, but Kanosuke just hits that sick power drive knee right into the face of, of Suji. I'm like, oh my god, this could yeah. be over here. But both men just collapsed to the mat. It was, oh. So good. So good. Um, so good. Later in the match, Takeshita hits, uh, hits a lariat into the power drive knee, but then uh, Suji comes back with a huge lariat. Hard, he hits some bunch of hard strikes, dropping Takeshita, hits the stomp, the like just a basic curb stomp. He goes for a Marlow crash, but gets caught, and Takeshita hits the blue thunder bomb for two. You can't get the win there, so he hits that world-class elbow, goes for Raging Fire, but it's reversed into a stunner. Suji hits a Gene Blaster, but Takeshita gets a foot on the ropes. You're like, oh my god. It just it just kept like ramping. Oh. It was great, though, that the way that they just had the crowd in the palm of their hands from start to finish for this match was just insane. Yeah, uh, so Suji lines up for Gene Blaster, but he but Takesha sidesteps him. He runs in the corner, and as he comes back up, Takesha hits him with this huge German, and you can see him kind of like get this look on his face, and he's like, time for a power drive, and stands up, turns around, and is hit by an insanely solid Gene Blaster, and Suji gets the win. Oh. Holy crap. Yeah. Let's talk about, since you, I, I'm, I'm always not so great with the moves. Let's talk about the energy of this match versus their first time around. These men came into their first match very much, I'm going to say cocky. They're very cocky, very arrogant. Both Suji and Takeshka came in at this alpha mentality of of i'm the better dude in this situation and in this match 
it became an all out war. It wasn't a, I'm bigger, I'm better. It was, I've faced you before. I know what to expect now. Now I just got to prove in this moment I'm better. And it was so, so good. The dominance of both of these men. I mean, I mentioned it before. I'm going to say it again. Why is why are we not getting this version of Takeshka on AEW? Mm-hmm. This is what we need being pushed on AEW so that AEW no, fans know what it is that NJPW is about. It's not about what it, you guys are seeing on the AEW television. That's that's pretty tame in comparison. Um these guys are killing it over here. I really hope the AEW fans are, are keeping an eye on this and, and are proud of how far Takeshka has gone. Because goddamn. They really should be because he's had such a great run here. Um, yeah. And just, and he had, to, he had to be carried out after the match. Suji did have words for him and did give him props for how good he has done and how, how strong of an opponent that he is. Cause he didn't talk shit to him. He gave him props in like, in what it was an incredible match. And I, I, I love that. See that respect there at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would have to say if I had to pick somebody to, to at this point in time to say they were the, the MVP of this tournament, I'd have to say it was Keshka. He, yep. he didn't have a bad match. Even the matches he lost, he put over the people who he lost to so well. Gave them so much credibility. It's it, he's He was the one person. I expected him to be a person of, of interest in this, but I didn't expect him to be the level that he ended up being. Yeah, like... He he's so good, and he, it's almost like he's a hidden gem of fresh wrestling. Even though he's signed to the number two company in the United States, like he's almost like a hidden gem. Because like when he's given an opportunity to wrestle certain people on AEW, when he's working a guy like Osprey, when he's working a guy like Fletcher, he has these incredible matches. When he's put into that that ladder six way, he did some crazy ass shit, looking awesome in there. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't. And I've watched him have multiple great matches in AEW. Don't get me wrong, but he mm-hmm. doesn't get the same time, the like the same length. He's just, these are twenty minute matches that he's been getting here, like fifteen to twenty minutes, and he's only usually getting eight to ten on AEW. So you can you can't build as great of a match that way either. That's a big thing. No. Yeah. Oh, you can't build much of a match at all in that, and especially with the stuff that he could do and the stuff that he requires to build because he does have an incredible in-ring psychology where a lot of same with jake lee where the they they have that kind of lack of a better better term the mental fuckery that they do with their opponents and it, it works so well but they need the time to grow that and when people are too busy marking out on something else mm-hmm. We don't get to see that, and it's unfortunate. I hope they send him over again for like anything else, like give us like him again for tag league or something, and just send over Fletcher with him or something. Yeah, that'd be great. Because like, and again, and I know a lot of the undercards the Kesher was working with United Empire, um, because there is a weird connection through Don Callis. I know you hate that man. But again, he has Fletcher in 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 his in his team, and he is friendly with Will Osprey. So the, if you know, like notice, Takesha was working a bunch of undercards, working with Akira and others, uh, working mm-hmm. the undercards. So like, it, it, it's, and, and, and despite, I feel that like even the despite facing each other in the tournament in in Hanare, I, I feel that they've kind of established a mutual dominant respect for each other. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. do you think he's the new member? He, oh, I already know who the new member is. It's not him. Oh. It's, a, it's a guy out of California. He's coming over to be the new member of the. He's gonna be the new member of the Empire. That's I already know. Uh, uh, oh, wow. Jacob that was a letdown. Um, Jacob Austin Young. I want to say. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Fa too. I was like, what the fudge? <laughs> oh. No, he's in WWE. What are you talking about? He's, yeah. That's that'd be great if confused. we... Oh, dude, it'd be great right, if we... Well, I'll dude. have to talk about that after. 
we'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're gonna get on to the uh, the day 18 and the A and B block finals to set up your G1 final. And it kicked off with the B block of David Finley versus Yota Suji. Um, they immediately just go at each other here, like they just started hitting each other, just going mm-hmm. and. Shuji dropping Finley with that shoulder block and just kind of establishing a little bit of dominance early, but like, uh, and Suji kind of getting in control early, but then Finley just bullying his way back and just doing his Finley ish. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> to, 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 to do a Melbaulism there, uh, is Finley ish. <laughs> yeah. And, like, he just starts getting in with that bullying-style attack, whipping him into the corner really hard. And then he just kind of, like, lays on him for a pin, like, this really stupid casual pin. But I was like, mm-hmm. you're dumb. I mean, he was really – he really played up the heel stuff in this one mm-hmm. for, for quite some time because the menta- – like, the, the kind of vibe I got from him at the beginning – Went before they had started actually fighting when Suji was still wearing his jacket and everything. I felt that Finley wasn't really sweating Suji. I feel like he kind of came in and being like, who are you? You're just a young boy. I'm the global champion. Like, you know, you're, you lost to Naito before. It's my time now. Like, mm. I felt like it, he was very authoritative maybe in this in that he felt that he had authority over Yoda Suji and you Yoda Suji said nay nay sir mm-hmm. sashay away yeah and, and just it, it just it it was surely showing that Suji wasn't going to take Finley shit and that was the best mm-hmm. best story I think they could have told in here um mm-hmm. there was a Part where Suji puts Finley up top, he comes up, but fin- Suji gets uh, knocked to the apron. Then he knocks Finley down to the apron. And he ch- go and Finley had set up two tables on the outside, and he goes mm-hmm. to try to stomp Finley off. But Finley dodges up, like off and through a table, but dodges. Finley dodges and lands, and then Finley attacks him on the floor. He gets him up in like this Argentine backbreaker and just runs him into the post back first. Oh, that mm-hmm. didn't look that didn't look nice at all. No. Not even no, a little, no. Not even a bit. Um, just great stuff there. Uh, uh, Suji ends up slipping a power bomb at one point, but Finley catches the knee and just just takes just catches the knee and just brings him up and just brings him over his knee with that just sick backbreaker that he does. Like, oh god, yeah. Did just mm-hmm. the way that he does that so solidly and so well, but the way it um, it looks, it just has a complete reckless disregard look for the safety of the person taking the move. It looks so crazy and wild, but it's so mm. crisp and defiant. Uh, yeah, that thing was gross. <laughs> yeah, just just some great stuff. Uh, Suji hitting the uh, a flying knee out of nowhere to a running Finley puts Finley up top hits that Spanish fly for and gets gets a two out of it and then follows mm-hmm. with a Falcon Arrow driver for two and comes right in back with a curb stomp just like no I'm mm-hmm. not letting you there um he, he goes for Marlo but Finley uh kind of gets out of the way then pops him up like he gets out of the way and then just like lifts him up over himself and like hot shot, like lifts, toss him up in the air to hot shot him into the corner and then just hits him with this sick looking dominator. And both men are down just so good. Um, mm-hmm. Finley gets into his power bombs and the buckle bombs just wrecking Suji. Um, they end up on the floor again. Uh, Suji's trying to do uh, Alabama slam to Finley through the tables, but he stops it. Gets him up and power bombs him through the table, but he hits one and then he kind of his shoulders and it like his upper like his shoulders and his head hit the second and you can see the dent where his head hit. Yeah, yeah. I felt so bad for Suji there. Yeah, and those tables they scare me because like I know ours have like a metal frame around it, but it's not quite as thick as the ones in Japan. So the metal frames, they, they freak me out the most whenever I see a table. Oof. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Suji does get back into 19, but Finley immediately hits Trash Panda into Oblivion. 
He only gets two. Finley attacking Suji, just attacking, just beating on him. But the ref has to pull him off, and then Finley shoves the ref as he's just incensed at this point. Uh, Finley gets a power bomb and just goes back to the power bomb, the buckle bombs. But again, he, he can't get the win here. Um, he goes for a he hits two buckle bombs, goes for another power bomb, but Suji rolls him up for two. He then hits him with a gene blaster, but Suji's kind of delayed on getting onto the pin, so he only gets two out of it. Uh, so Suji comes with a curb stomp, hits him with a curb stomp, goes up, Marlo crash, but he can only get two. He gets a three point stance, but as he's running at him, Finley pulls him into a small package, uh, for two. Uh, he Picks him up, goes for overkill, but Finley, but Suji catches Finley with a big headbutt to stop it, then hits him with the deadbolt, and then lines up Gene Blaster, and Yoda Suji is moving on to the G1 finals. Yes. Okay, so the deadbolt, is that that double underheaded or double on hook? Yeah. The Yu Yumura finish where you underhook the two arms right. again and just belly to belly. Underhook over. suplex, yeah. 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 Whew. I was looking forward to this match and it did not disappoint me. I took mm -hmm. the most notes on it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Suji definitely targeting that shoulder also very early with David Finley. We don't see a ton of technicality out of Suji, but when we do, it's usually pretty. Pretty, pretty precise, pretty targeted. So very, very smart to target that repaired shoulder of Finley. Um, yeah, the tables were a concern early on for me, especially when a war dog is setting up weaponry. You always got to be concerned. Um, there was a Tope Suicida that Suji did, that rocket that you were talking about that launched Finley over a barricade onto one of the announce tables. That was pretty amusing. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, what else? What else? There was, oh, okay. There's a combination that Suji does that I think is a, a very lucha thing where he fed Finley a backbreaker. And then as he came up with it, he flew him right down to the ground. He kind of bounced off the ground and he fed a curb stomp to him. Mm -hmm. I love that sequence. It's just the way he does it and the way it just flowed so well. Like Finley didn't stop moving. It just, it flowed so perfectly into the next thing. It looked so good. You can see sometimes there's sequences like that where people will stop somewhere and it'll kind of look a little awkward because they're trying to ready the next part of it. Now, these guys know their stuff so well. So good. It was just go, 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 go. Um, there is a head trapped stomp that I like that Suji does where he caught the ears, essentially, the head of Finley. In between his feet and just slammed him down onto the uh, the apron before being um avoiding being yeeted through the tables on the outside there i really really like how he does that it's a really fun unique thing um that you see some people do sometimes they don't always pull it off in a way that looks effective suji does not have that problem um yeah the backbreaker that you mentioned was just by finley was so good he looks he makes those things look so amazing um yeah that, that, you got that power bomb off the tables yeah the curbs it's become something i really really enjoy seeing from yoda suji because he has kind of started as as i've mentioned before kind of making it a regular signature move so we're not just seeing one variation of it we're seeing like three or four kind of come throughout these really long awesome singles matches and i'm kind of living for it i love it you know i love those simple but effective moves especially when someone can make them look more sensational make them not look so simple i love it yeah i i agree and again this these two i thought had just such great chemistry They've been working mm -hmm. together on and off in multi-man tags throughout this year with the mm -hmm. LIJ versus War Dogs kind of feud that was going on for a bit. And just, mm -hmm. I find these two just, and again, they're about the same age, but Finley just, mm -hmm. he's, they talked about it on comedy, the same age, around the same age. But Finley, again, has been around wrestling his entire life. He was touring with the WWE when he was a kid with his dad mm -hmm. and, and helping with ring crew when he was a kid and a teenager. Mm -hmm. So like he, and he got any, 
he went through the dojo system when he was young and has been in has been pro- working professionally since he was a teenager right so like mm-hmm. he he's had all this experience but they both are the same age so but it's it, it, it's just telling how how they t- how it is here i love it i just love mm-hmm. the way they work together and the difference in contrast and experience and style but it just it flowed all so well together in here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. And what I love is that it was it was a similar but different story that was told with ELP and uh, Bolt Molek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. very much so. I can't just I loved it. I loved it here. Mm-hmm. Let me go to the, my favorite match. I, Obviously. <laughs> dude, these two killed it, man. And again, the first time around, they they it was fire. It was like I, I raved about it the first time. It was it was a day nine. Day nine, these two just had an incredible, I think it was day nine. They had an incredible match. Just, Mm -hmm. and then just to bring it back and keep going with and have it do it again, but do it better. Holy crap. Right. And that's that's also, we've seen Takagi grow a little bit in this one because we've mentioned, or I mentioned, he was struggling a little bit. He struggled with Zack Sabre Jr. in their first bout with defending against the technicality. He struggled a little bit more with the Great Ocon, but less. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, he still struggled, but significantly less. This match, same thing. We saw him struggle just a little bit, but it was significantly less than the match before. He's he's growing. He's learning how to defend against this. Take us into it, man, because I know you have a lot to say. Yeah, I'm going to go through a few points. I got a lot of notes, but I've, I've uh, picked out a few highlights. Um, Saber really working over the arm, gets the arm drag, stomp, stomping on the arm to really continue the damage uh, that Shingo Takagi has has collectively gained throughout this entire tournament. Uh, just really works it over. Uh, does that that Shayna Baszler thing where you plant the, the hand and with the elbow sticking up and stomps the elbow. Just, ugh, well. But Shingo was like fighting back at point. He took him to the floor and beat him up, and then he gets him back at the point, and he gets technical work in the headlock, go trying to get into the anaconda vice. But so and Saber, Saber, which he, he's a technical master, but he actually had to go to the ropes to break it. He usually has a way out of most submissions and in, in holds, but he had to go to the ropes, and that's just just. A, I think that's more not the, the the technical ability, but to the power that that Takagi had to hold in the headlock in the attempted anaconda device i think more than the technical side of it oh 100 100 despite putting on the, the the size that he has over the last little while i mean we can only do so much and you i tell you all the time this is just glamour this is not functional this doesn't do anything it just looks pretty so I'm not saying that's the same situation with Zack Sabre Jr., but in regards, in, in comparison to Shingo Takagi, Shingo Takagi is solid, and he's been solid for years. Um, he's dense. That's some dense muscle right there. That's some thick muscle. It's it's going to be hard to to kind of power your way out of that for sure. Yeah, again, it just just cra- crazy stuff. Saber reversing a whip mm-hmm. into a schoolboy and roll and rolls him through. Get grabs the leg and just smashes the knee into the mat and just starts working over the knee. He does that spot where he's going for that uh, the Romero special, but can't get him the hands back. So he just jumps up and stomps both knees at the same time. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mina does uh, something similar to that too, doesn't she? Mina Shirakawa? Oh yeah, she does it. it yeah. She it kind of, she sets up for the Romero special, then just stomps the knees instead. So uh, yeah. uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, Bryan Danielson does it too. Instead of he'll start setting up for Romero special into the surfboard, but then he just says screw it and stomps the knees. Like it, it's very much a technical. Like if you can't get this the Romero special, you stomp the knees. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds legit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, there's a great spot where Shingo actually hits a magic screw in this match. I was like, yeah, magic screw. <laughs> uh, it was it was a superplex, and then he rolls through, puts him on the rope, uh, feet on the ropes, and hits the magic screw through. It was just a great yes. sequence. Uh, Saber drop holding, 
drop toe holding uh, Shingo. I guess a European clutch, but Shingo counters it with the rear naked choke, then goes into a ground cobra, otherwise known as if you're if you're an MMA fan, a twister submission. Um, and this is where Sabers trap again. It's it's a lot of it's the power here, but it's it's also a very tight and hard some harder submission to get out of and saber has to fight and mm -hmm. get to the rope. So shingle and pulls him up hits made in Japan, but can't get the win here again. Great stuff. Uh, last, the dragon gets stopped. Saber's reversing a bunch of the, the moves that Shingo's trying to do. And he catches them with this beautiful Zach driver. Um, mm -hmm. Shingo with hard shots, but saber pull it, pulls the arm, taking him down, stomps on it. Uh, Shingo catches him with a gory into the gory special, but Saber transitions into a Cobra twist. But Shingo just like just slips him up onto his shoulders and death and hits him with a Death Valley driver and follows with a pumping bo bomber. Just great, just great sequences there. Uh, Saber reverses another last of the dragon, um, and into a choke, but Shingo then just drops back to break it. But Saber pulls a triangle, Shingo lifts him up. Turns the triangle into last of the dragon. Goes for the cover. One, two. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh my God, Saber's out. And he kicks out of last of the dragon. And not many, it's it's that's a very protective move in New Japan, last of the dragon. If he hits it, it puts most people down. So for Saber to kick out, I was like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Um and the crowd erupt. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Well, well, they knew they saw something that doesn't normally happen. Too on top of everything, it's like, oh, that doesn't happen. This is big. So, mm -hmm. so Shingo starts unloading lariats, but Saber is like staying up, and he's just like, come on. And he's just like, he's just absorbing them. I'm like, what is going on here? Uh, so Shingo starts striking. Saber responds with more. They're trading kicks, trading strikes. Um, and Saber hits his, his, his like, a uh, 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 Zach Bomber of his own, dropping Shingo. Um, mm -hmm. Saber then picks him up. Zach Driver, but he only gets two. Um, then he goes right into the knee bar. And then you can see Shingo's fighting it. And then he up, up then he torques the heel to add the heel hook into it. And you can just see the face and he's just fighting and fighting, but he's too far from the ropes and Shingo Takaki submits to the, the, the heel hook knee bar combo. Oh, and like something to, to kind of go back to the ground Cobra that Shingo had Zack Sabre Jr. in before, I think also the height differential really kind of played into Shingo's favor in that respect because Zack Sabre Jr. is so long mm -hmm. and so tall. When you have someone who's a lot more compact like Takagi, it, it works out well, way, way, way better in the smaller person's favor because you, that person has to work so much more to pull those longer limbs out of a smaller more confined space um but unfortunately for takagi it just wasn't enough to put down the wizard he's a wizard harry you're a wizard zach a wizard. you're a wizard zach <laughs> you're a wizard zaki you're a wizard he is. He's a technical wizard. There, there's like as you had mentioned. There's not really anything that he cannot get out of. And I don't think it's it's um like anything that he couldn't escape in this. I don't think it was a matter that he didn't have the technical know how. He absolutely knew how. He was just too long. It's just mm -hmm. too tall. It's <laughs> just too big in comparison to the compactedness of Takagi. And then on top of that, Takagi is like a pit bull. He grabs on and he's not going to let go. So, yeah, Zach put in a big struggle on this one. But, man, what a match. Oh, what a such match. A, such a satisfying win. I was just like, <laughs> oh, just to see him, like, take it with this admission out of uh, just that. And he had been, had yeah, been working that yeah. knee for a few minutes at that point, too, really trying to, like, damage those knees. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I love the way this finished. And, again, I got a huge mm -hmm. Zach Sabre Jr. fan. Um, yeah. Suji does come out after in his uh bright yellow LIJ shirt, offers the handshake, they shake hands, and Suji just leaves like no, no drama, no fuss, just like 
already. Let's let's go. They see it like again, it was contentious, don't get me wrong, but it was like nobody's gonna hit each other, nobody's gonna it's not it's, this isn't house of torture, this isn't a war dogs, they're not gonna attack mm-hmm. each other, they're gonna wait for the their match the next day. Yeah, in that situation, the only thing I was disappointed with was the atrocious outfit that Suji wore. <laughs> could also be that i'm just not a fan of yellow Mm. but like when he came out there i was like did you literally just grab an article of clothing from every person you passed on your way to the ring to just the outfit did not look put together (laughs) and the random freaking rossi ogawa freaking massive fedora (laughs) that was funny that was that was humorous that was humorous when he first got in there, I didn't know who it was at first. Yeah, it took me a second. I was, I was like, like, oh, that's Suji. Who's this cowboy? It wasn't even a cowboy. <laughs> uh, but then Saber oh. goes out into the crowd with the mic and goes to say something in Japanese, says, see you tomorrow. And that's all he says. Just And, and they, Walker and Chris both talk on commentary saying he's got a speech, but he's waiting till he wins the G1 to, to give his speech. To, Which to is really fair. See. Just sign it off. So uh Saber yeah. walking through the crowd, takes a fan's flag, puts it over his shoulders, walking around, but then throws it back to the fan before he leaves. It just like mm-hmm. ah, great match. Great match. Shingo just looking oh. so good, so strong, so dominant. But Saber pulling out all these moves out of nowhere to really uh wear down Shingo throughout. I, I love this match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great match. Great way to, to start to bring the G1 to a close. Yeah. So we have one more show covering G1. That'll be the G1 finals capped off with Yoda Suji versus Zach Saber Jr. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow with that. I, I'm excited for it because, mm-hmm. oh, yes, ah. yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm in the <laughs> middle of that. I'm in the middle of what I know the results, but I'm in the middle of watching the show right now. Um, and yeah, I, I, again, I've been taking minor notes for the undercard, but man, I'm going to take so much notes for this match. I know I will. <laughs> so many notes. No doubt. No Shout doubt. out Lonely Island. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but we have come to the end <sighs> of another episode of NJBW Pudo Wrestle Review. Yay. Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> Uh, you can you can find me on the X at that kind of guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melbourne and Talk. And in the comment section of our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk. You can also find me in the comment sections of A Plus Productions Facebook page. Go over there, check it out. All the feeds are gonna be up. Should be to late or should already be up now because they would have come up. They should have been up last night uh, between the wrestling feed, the sports feed, and the entertainment feed. They'll all be there. There'll be links to subscribe to each of them. So check it out there at A Plus Productions on Facebook. We'll have more coming to you soon. And if you are listening to us on the A Plus Productions audio feed, thank you so much. We really do appreciate thank it. Thank you. Big shout out to our friends over at our local establishment. Uh, you can. You can find them over at Twitch at Our Local Establishment or YouTube.com slash at Our Local Establishment. Uh, go back, check out Mel Ball's interview from this past weekend where she talked with Mark Talks Wrestling all about herself and all the stuff that she's done. And if you want to, even previous interviews, you can check out mine where I sat down and talked all about me with Mark Talks or Astrid's where he where he talked with the wonderful Astrid Pizarro about, an, uh, about all her awesome stuff. And then this upcoming weekend on Saturday, you can check out him going one-on-one with his biggest nemesis, Old Ed. It all comes to a head when they face off in interview format. It's going to be a hell of a slobber knocker. (laughs) Old Ed. Old Ed, too. Old Ed. Hey! So we just got Natsupoi to be Old Ed's spokesperson. Yeah. Mascot. Uh, you and know. then you can you can find me there this Friday with Mel talking talking the G1 ending, talking we're gonna talk some start on five star Grand Prix, we're gonna talk some N1 victory, we're gonna talk some Mari Gold with Julia's departure. So much coming up over on Japanese Wrestling Update on Friday. 
<laughs> I don't really You're stealing my ish. You can still talk about it. <laughs> and one more big shout out to Mike the Ref, youtube.com slash at backbreaker video where you summon guests all of our shows. Thank you so much, very much, sir. You can find him live at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday, 9 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time this coming Sunday. You can find Mike over doing his uh, eat all in watch along. Check him out. I'll be at Melball's hanging out, eating some breakfast foods, watching wrestling there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we should probably make breakfast, shouldn't we? We really should. Um, so check that him out over make there. Make dad's pancakes again. And every other day of the week, you can find him playing games over there. And you can see the replays of that gaming content. YouTube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming, where you can find content from him, Mr. PJC, this little dude right here, Rick Jules, and their frequent guest, Kayla. Or the frequent guest. I almost said it. Kayla J. Stealing all my shit. Stealing all my shit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Where can they find you? <laughs> If you're wanting to follow a Melball, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melball. Yalins, you can also find me, as he mentioned, on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update. You didn't tell them the time, though. It's 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not, and then we will let you know on social media. Will. Yes, we will be live this week though because there is no wrestling hope it, hoping happening in Edmonton right now. So we're just we're just gonna watch better wrestling. Yes, um, but we will be on here at eight PM Mountain Time to talk to you guys about that better wrestling. You can also catch me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Stay tuned to our socials to see when the next episode is coming out for that one. There's a lot of crazy chaos going on with promotions over in Florida there. So we just have to be patient for when the natural is ready for us. If you are wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is NJPWWorld.com. It is some kind of yen. 1,250 <laughs> yen, I think. 1250 all right 1250 yen or approximately 10 canadian it's not 10 canadian it's more like 1450 i just like sean spears yeah that guy <laughs> if you're wanting to check out any of the wrestling at njbw before you take the plunge and make a purchase you can check out any of their new japan tv title matches which featured saxy jr matt riddle Zack Sabre Jr. El Presidente. El, El Presidente. Presidente. You know, at least, at least if he's going to be a champion holder, he is holding the right championship for it, I'm going to say. The most unappreciated one in the company. <laughs> but go check out those matches if you want to check it uh, check out anything before paying for full price for ngpw world andre my trusted friend and colleague do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people no i just want to say thank you all so much for tuning in if you're listening in audio form thank you for joining us on a plus production if you want to hear us there's an audio form go over to a plus productions on facebook the links are there for the wrestling the sports and the entertainment feed check it out and uh if you are watching on video thank you so very much for watching here to here on youtube whether it's andre mobile talk whether it's backbreaker video um thank you guys so much for supporting us on those two channels um please like the video subscribe to the ch uh, subscribe to the channel uh leave your comments down below we love hearing from you we love talking to you we love just getting your feedback on everything that we do um also don't forget to uh share us out to your friends family and kooky little kitties that exist in this world and don't forget to hit that note like kitties and like meow kitties the like, kitties like meow meow see meow. first of all that's what I thought you were referring to. What did you think I was referring I don't know what, to? I, well, I said kitties, but it sounded like it, it could mean like sound like kids, but I don't know. It was like meow, like meow, see meow. <laughs> Number two, meow, see meow. <laughs> That's my gangster kitty. 
<laughs> I'm literally <laughs> looking at a package. I have a package. Mao. I have a package, I have a yeah. package of Royale tissue sitting across from me on the other table behind oh. my computer. So that's why I thought kitties. Okay. Wow, Ding dong. See? Meow, see? Meow, see? Meow. Don't, hey, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Meow, see? Oh, see? Meow. <laughs> oh. oh, man. That being said, I am your Mel Ball. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.